Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. We've got everything you want, and lizards with stupid names. The Lizardmen emerged into Warhammer Fantasy alongside Bretonnia as the launch factions for Warhammer Fantasy 5th Edition back in 1996. It was a graduation party of sorts for both factions, which had existed in the game previously, but had never had this kind of spotlight. In the Lizards' case, they were a combination of two older factions, given entirely new lore. The Lizardmen of 5th Edition are an extremely potent force. Skinks punch well above their weight, Karoxagors are head and shoulder over other monstrous infantry, and the Chad Slan will dominate you, mentally and physically. The Lizardman Army Book is for winners, and for those aspiring to win. There's really no downside, except for the adorably stupid special characters. Before we start, I should mention that your old favorites including Croak, Mazdamundi, and Oxyadl are in here too. But they didn't get kicked to the curb like our following poor lizards. First up is Lottle Bottle, Saurus Hero. Lottle Bottle and his Saurus Legion guard the most revered mage priests in Zion Halpeck. He's not very smart, but he makes up for it by being amongst the most spiteful of all Saurus. He's also got a real big boy voice. His first special rule, Blood Curdling Roar, makes him cause fear. Cold Blooded Determination gives him and his accompanying unit a plus one bonus to combat resolution. Lottel tips the scales at 100 points, 18 more than a regular Saurus hero. His greatest downfall is that you cannot give him any magic items. He's sort of okay, considering the decent Saurus hero stat line. Speaking of mediocre Saurus, our second character is Croc. No, not Crocgar. He doesn't exist yet. Just Croc. Why is he Croc? Well, he's a crocodile. Yeah, GW subtlety at its finest. Croc is a uniquely spawned Saurus, with the head of a crocodile, and the body of a crocodile. He's got a couple special rules. Massive Jaws makes one of his four attacks ignore armor and inflict D3 wounds. It's a nice attack to use in a challenge or against monsters. His Bony Plates rule gives him a single saving throw reroll. It is technically better than nothing. Croc will cost you 113 points and has the same problem as Lottle Bottle does. I like Croc a little more because crocodiles are super cool. The Saurus characters are a little odd, but really they have nothing on the skinks. Let's begin with Itsy Bitsy. Oh, yeah, the names only get sillier from here. Itsy Bitsy is a particularly clever skink commander. He specializes in countering raiding expeditions by the greedier races of the Warhammer world. He has a single special rule, the incantation of Zeti Pakutzel. This is the last uttered thought of Mage Lord Zultep of Tlaxlan. Apparently, the beginning of a prophecy that would spell the doom for the enemies of the Lizardmen. Unfortunately, the many thousand year lifespan of a slan wasn't quite enough time for Lord Ziltep to finish his thought before he croaked. Ooh. Itsy Bitsy was the only skink that heard his prophecy and decided to keep the knowledge for himself for no particular reason. Now he can unleash the power of the utterance, Dragonborn style, and strike fear into the hearts of the enemy. Despite the somewhat suspect lore around this rule is actually pretty cool. Once per game, Itzy can force all enemy units within 8 inches to take an immediate panic test on 3 dice, discarding the lowest result. There's no way to stop this ability, and it could really mess up an enemy battle line. I think this is a great rule. I have enough trouble passing leadership tests with no modifiers whatsoever, so I can only assume that everyone else does too. Maybe don't take him versus the undead, though. Itzy's magic sword is the Piranha Blade. It does D3 wounds instead of 1. He's a skink, so he can't use it very well. 
He costs 105 points, which is double a normal skink hero. Take him for his scary Dovakin shout, or not at all. Next up is Eensy Weensy. Are we getting the naming theme yet? Eensy is my favorite Lizardman special character of all time. Something about a skink riding an ultra angry horned raptor just really spoke to me as a kid and an adult. Eensy's horned one mount is everything that a normal cold one wishes it could be. Weapon skill four with three attacks help make up for Eensy's relatively poor melee profile. The horned one also cures the stupid right out of any cold ones it accompanies. So if you're mad enough to take cold one riders into a game, you may as well take Eensy and mitigate a little bit of their suck. Eensy has one trick up his sleeve. He likes darts. He can hurl a number of darts at the enemy when he charges or is himself charged. For every four inches between him and the target, he has time to hurl one more dart, to a maximum of three. They hit on his ballistic skill of five and wound on a four plus. The darts count towards combat resolution in the following fight as well. They probably won't do too much damage, but they're a pretty neat gimmick nonetheless. Eensy will set you back 85 points. I can't recommend him when you could take an infinitely more useful skink hero on Pterodon, who could do everything that Eensy does, but much, much better. Still, the model and the artwork are awesome. One last honorable mention is none other than the Prophet of Sotek himself. You may know him from Total War, Teeny Weeny. <laughs> no, I didn't make that up. In his first incarnation, they named him slightly differently. He would become Teeny Juan in later, less silly editions. The only real question we're left with at the end of all this is, do you ever think that Itsy Bitsy and Teeny Weeny ever fought over possession of the greatest Lizardman artifact of all time, Lord Croak's yellow polka dot bikini, which he wore for the first time today. Thanks for watching Lost Warhammer. Hit like if you think skinks should wear battle bikinis. Subscribe if you want to see more video about Lizardman lingerie, I guess? If you like the things that I say and the way that I say them, check out the War Games Orchard podcast for more Warhammer fantasy talk. Finally, thanks to our patrons for making these videos possible.